QuickBooks Online 2024 Balance Sheet Vertical Analysis. Get ready and relax because it's so easy using QuickBooks Online, you'd think it'd be a crime. But it's not. Unless possibly you're doing bookkeeping for the Bidens or something like that. But anyways, let's get into it. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. We're going to be in the favorites, right-clicking on that balance sheet report so we can open link in new tab above. Right-clicking on the profit and loss, doing the same, open in a new tab above. Go into that middle tab, closing up the hamburger. There is our balance sheet. Let's do a range change, bringing it back to 2023. 010123 tab, 123 tab run into refreshing tab in to the right in closing the handbook in and scrolling up and changing the range in again in 010123 tab 123123 and run it to refresh it let's go back to the balance sheet because that's where our major point of focus is we talked about in prior presentations the general balance sheet the formatting of the balance sheet and then we did some comparative balance sheets noting First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because... Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com that you can get a wide variety of balance sheets when you start to put the comparative balance sheets in place. And now we want to think about a vertical analysis type of balance sheet using percentages. So the way to do a vertical analysis, it's quite easy. We can go into the uh, drop down. I'm sorry, not that drop down. This one over here compared to another period. And then down below, you've got the percentage of rows and the percent of columns. We want the percent of columns. So we'll pick that one. And then I'm going to say, OK, run it and we get this nice column on the right hand side this is a standard kind of tool that's often used uh, on financial statements and it's often useful to be comparing it possibly to prior periods but also possibly to other companies if we're benchmarking to another company if we're a hamburger shop and we're trying to compare ourselves to mcdonald's then we can't really compare the dollar amounts that we have on our balance sheet and we could do a similar thing on the income statement which we'll do later Instead, what we can possibly do is compare the percentages. So let's see how it works if I pull out the trusty calculator. And this gets a little bit confusing because it's a little bit different the way it works on the balance sheet as compared to the income statement. So this is where we have another one of these differences between the types of reports that we have. On the balance sheet, we're going to be comparing everything to the bottom line numbers, the balancing items. So remember, we have assets equal liabilities plus equity so total assets is at 100 percent liabilities and equity is at 100 percent now if you compare the assets to a similar thing like if you were investing in stocks for example you might try to invest and copy or mirror some kind of index fund or possibly you know your index fund is basically doing a, a percentage or you might try to like copy a, a really good investor like a warren buffett or something how would you do that it's not like you can just follow their investments because they have more money than you do but you can uh you can look at their percentage of total assets to see what their allocation looks like right and that's going to be one of the fundamental concepts whenever you're getting into an investing it will be like well how much what percentage of my assets should be in stocks bonds cash so on so with a business, similar thing, except we have a different end goal. Our goal, 
is not simply to save like for retirement or something like that, but rather to have, you know, we might have multiple goals, whatever the business goals are, but to grow, to have money that we can use to, to uh, reinvest in the business in order to generate revenue. Now, also just remember that our business is not designed to just hold on to money unless unless your business is like an investment company or something like that where you're investing in stocks and bonds if your business like this is landscaping and the company has a whole lot of money then and you're not using it to grow the business you would think that the money would then be distributed to you as the owner you would draw it out so you could put it somewhere else like in stocks and bonds and get a, a return on it so the idea from the business standpoint is that everything on the business is there to all the assets that we have are there to either help us generate revenue in the current period or or we're saving up to purchase something that we're going to invest in that's going to help us generate revenue in the future is the general idea so for a landscaping for example we might have a lot of inf a lot of our our investment buried in assets like our truck and we might have a lot of other equipment depending on the type of landscaping that we are doing and that's where our money is basically going uh or of course inventory that we're purchasing inventory if we have a whole lot of cash there's no real reason to have a whole lot of cash uh unless you're saving up to invest in something because then you can you can give it to the owner and the owner can distribute it uh, or invest it somewhere else right would be the general idea okay in any case how does this work then well we're going to take each of these totals this comes out to 2001 and i can compare it then to the total of my total assets or liabilities and equity because they're the same divided by 23436.29 there if i move the decimal point over we get uh, hold on a second k paso we've got uh oh i was looking at the wrong one 2001.52 divided by uh divided by the 23436.29 moving the decimal over two places we get the 8.54 percent about so that's how much is in cash we can compare that again to a relative larger business to see what what they have invested in cash and it would be likely that we're going to be looking at things like our inventory right and say well how much inventory compared to my total assets 596.25 divided by 23436.29 if I move the decimal two places over we get the 2.54 percent and then if we have many businesses are very labor I mean very equipment dependent like a classic example is farming right a far if you're if you have a farm then it's likely that you have a lot of assets that have a lot of value but you could still run into cash flow issues because all of your money is in the equipment it's in the land it's in the equipment that's being used because that's the thing that's helping you to generate revenue and so and if you had more money if you had a whole lot of money what would you do you'd buy more equipment to be more efficient so you could produce more stuff or you'd buy more land so that you can generate more revenue that's why it's or if you don't want to do that you'd give it to yourself as a draw so that you can then invest it outside of the business because this isn't an investment business right you would then put it into the stocks and bonds so oftentimes other businesses by the way don't have any kind of investment so if you're working like the 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 types of business that don't have a real barrier to entry based on how much you invest in it such as if you start a youtube channel or something like that you have to buy some equipment but it's pretty uh it's pretty low in terms of how much you have to invest to get rolling in it that means that you have a lot more competition in something like that, but you don't have that barrier uh, to entry. Whereas again, like a farm or many other kind of production businesses or something like that, you have to put down the capital and get the capital for that initial investment, which is painful obviously, but it also means there's a higher barrier to entry and therefore possibly less competition, right? So in any case, if we look at the the equipment here we can see that's at one three four nine five divided by the two three four three six point two nine and that's going to give us about the fifty seven point five eight on the liability side uh we can compare everything once again we can compare it to the assets but we can also compare it to the 
the bottom line here because they will be the same assets or liabilities and equity liabilities plus equity will equal the assets so this would be kind of like a ratio type of analysis right what is my uh, accounts payable 1602.67 compared to my total assets or my liabilities in equity those two numbers being the same 23436.29 that's going to give us our about 6.8 four percent if we were to round it and so on and so forth down the line now note that you could also do these vertical analysis possibly in conjunction with multiple periods right so for example you might say okay i'm going to give a balance sheet if i was to present this at the end of the month to a client the question would be, well, should I give them a normal balance sheet and then also a balance sheet that has this vertical analysis column? Because that's kind of repetitive because they already have the balance sheet. So maybe I just give them the balance sheet here with the vertical analysis balance sheet instead, although that's a little bit more confusing to look at because it has a whole nother column on it. Uh, you can also, if I hit the drop down here, if we wanted a quarter by quarter comparison, as we saw before, now we've got a quarter by quarter comparison with the vertical analysis uh, in there as well. So, so now the question would be, well, do I wanna give them a normal balance sheet and then also a vertical analysis and also a quarter by quarter balance sheet without the vertical analysis and maybe one with the, ver or maybe I could just give them the quarter by quarter analysis, which already has the ending numbers for December and has the vertical analysis. However, this report is quite cumbersome because it has a lot of numbers on it. So this might be overwhelming to many people if you give them this one. So these are the questions you wanna think about when you're starting to bundle your, your reports because now we have a whole lot of combinations that we have now, right? I can, I can run this by quarter, I can run it by month, and then I can add either the percentage column or without the percentage column, and so on so in any case let's bring it back to the totals only totals only run the report if i was to provide this to somebody else outside external reporting i would usually go up to the customize up top and do our normal customization which i'd like to have the the negative numbers to be uh, bracketed and red i would remove the pennies and then in the header and footer i'm going to get rid of that date time and report basis at the bottom so if i run that so now we've removed the the pennies we still have cents but we've removed the pennies and then uh and then the negative numbers if there were any there are some are going to be red and bracketed so those pop out we've got nothing on the footer on down below so the next thing we might do is to is to memorize this report or they call it customize, uh, save customization here. I don't know. They use memorize in the old in the old uh, desktop version. I guess they had to be different here. So customize customization seems like a longer, cumbersome word to say, doesn't it? Save customization, customize versus memorize. I guess it's the same. I don't know. Anyways, if I then save customization, we can put it down here. And again, I could add a group. I can add you know the name. And then we could say save the group and then we could say we're going to uh s not i'll just keep it at that and so let's go ahead and save it and then when i want to open this up possibly as my external reports that i would do periodically at the end of the month quarter and or year we can go to the first tab and then the reports on the left and in the customized reports we now have our our report uh, here when i open it up i can open that up and then i can just change the date range uh, when i'm working in my customized report so let's hit the thing again so once again that's going to be on the reports on the left hand side and the customized reports you can also save it possibly to the management reports so that you can put them in into a management report format again we'll look at that more in future presentations Oh, the other thing you want to do maybe is change the name up top. I probably should have changed the name to so I can click in here and call it like a vertical vertical. I think I spelled that right. Hopefully vertical analysis balance sheet. We would call it we would call it vertical. Let's say analysis 
vertical analysis balance sheet something like that for the name so now we have something named different than the balance sheet that's probably the name that you would want to use in here as well also note that it didn't add it to my group so if i if i want to uh, edit this thing i can edit it and then in the report i have balance sheet i can change the name to vertical analysis i may have spelled that wrong my fingers aren't working correctly and then we can add the group and i'm just going to put a name and so when you add this custom report the group it will follow the schedule set for the group uh, you will no longer have its own schedule okay share i'm going to say save it do, 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 and then boom close this back out and so now it's under a group so there we have that one